Gal, what does Kevin Walters take away from that result, though? Well, I, th I thought they obviously played really well. Tyson Gamble was a, was a bit of a difference the other night, but I know there's a fair bit of a hype around him at the moment, what he did the other night. But you've got to remember, he's 24 years of age. He's, been, he's played four games over four years. He did play really well the other night. I suppose he's, he's got to find that consistency now, play week in, week out like that. If he can keep playing like that, uh, you know, he can, he can probably remain in the side. But as I said, he, it's, I'm not saying it's a fluke, but he has been around for a few years and hasn't been able to do it consistently. So that's going to be his challenge now. Try and do what he did on the weekend consistently because he, I thought he was great. He had a lot of attitude in the game. He had a lot of spark and took, didn't take a backward step from anyone on the Titans side. So I thought he was absolutely outstanding. But I thought he, uh, he played straight and he allowed Milford just to worry about Milford drive, which is a running game. Yeah, he controlled the team, which I thought was really good. And I thought their forwards played well as well, which um, it's going to be a big test for him this week, obviously. But um, they, did, they did well last week. You imagine, Kevy, obviously, if they've won a match, he's going to stick with them. Will it be a season-long thing and perhaps beyond, Gus? Because a lot of talk they're after someone with a bigger name. Yeah, I don't know about long term, but I think certainly at the moment he'll stick with that winning combination. I mean, what they did the other night was extraordinary. I remember getting a text message from our own Matt Thompson after about 15 minutes saying, the Broncos are terrible. I said, they haven't had the ball yet. I said, the opposition scored three tries off kicks. And when, as soon as the Broncos scored the first try, I texted him back. I said, this is not over. And you can just see the athleticism of the Broncos tip in. On this show, on a couple of occasions this year, I've said, I'm not giving up on the Broncos. There's too much talent there. There's a lot of flaws in their game. There's a lot of flaws in their technique in both attack and defence. But if they get in a free-flowing contest like this, they're going to trouble a lot of sides. They've got a, they've got a lot of free movers. And, um, you know, I thought the halves fed them really well. I was happy for Milford to come back because I still think there's good football left in Milford. I, don't, I just don't know where the problem has been there in the past. But he's certainly got to stick with that combination for the time being. Long term, though, they need a marquee goal kicking or a marquee kicking game controlling halfback. There's no risk. Gus, is the problem, I don't want to be insulting to previous coaches, is that maybe they're not being coached? I mean, we see, uh, we saw the Seabold situation last year. We see a rookie coach in Kevy Walters. Is that the issue for the Broncos? Well, other than. Alan Langer and Darren Lockyer, have they ever produced a half? I don't know. They haven't produced a half since those eras. You know, so they've got to question their own development programs or their, their, their recruitment or whatever it is from there. You know, like, you've got to be thinking at some stage you can produce someone who can play seven or six rather than constantly having to experiment. Um, but they need, you know, every team needs, if you want to win a comp, you need a marquee number seven, someone that's going to control the game, or a marquee number six with a young number seven. But um, they haven't got either at the moment. Well, the numbers don't lie either. They have been chopping and changing the Broncos, trying to find the, wrong, the right combination in a battler of a season in 2020 and so far in 2021 as well. You compare uh, the combinations uh, that we have in the league at the moment and just how few changes have been made from some of those teams that are, uh, are setting the pace in season 2021 so far. And over the past two years, and we're talking a full season last year and a handful of games this year, there has been... Uh, just the 13 games for Milford and Croft. That's their best effort. Seven different combos. Uh, so who's the benchmark? When you watch footy, Gal, what oh, halves? Cleary, Cleary and who I buy mile at the moment and have been for the past 12 months, I've got to say. They've, they're just brilliant the way they play together. I mean, Cleary is the old head, to be honest with you. He's only got 20, 21, 20 years of age, but he just controls the game so well. Um, steady head and he shows good defender, good kicking game. And Jerome Luai out on that left-hand edge just... Runs right, does what he wants. He's got a big kick out there, which takes a lot of attention off him, and he's able to just play footy. So they're, they're the standouts for me at the moment. Um, and the, the Melbourne halves are good too, but I just they're, they're great. They're not good, they're great, but I just think these two are clearly the, the best at the moment, I think. Well, you've got them listed down there for 28 games together in the top grade. It's five or six years together. They've been playing together since they were 15, 16 in the junior rep program, as have a lot of the kids up there. So, um, you know, it's important, and, and I think for spines, Time spent playing together is a really big factor when you're looking at the prospects of, of, of a team. And unless that nine, seven, six, and one have spent, or at least three of them have spent a lot of time together, it's, it's really hard to win games consistently. Uh, Gus, Reese Walsh, Sam Walker, David Fafita, all these young guns to have departed the Broncos. There's talk that Xavier Coates will be headed perhaps to the Melbourne Storm. Dave Donaghy, who's left the Storm and has come to the Broncos. As CEO, he's a few days into the role, has said today there's no reward for development. There's an ability for vultures to swoop in and throw ridiculous amounts of money and steal your best talent. Is there an easy answer to solving that problem and is, is that the issue that the Broncos are facing? No, that's, that's a problem within the game. There's no doubt about that. There is no, I've said it all along, 
There is no incentive, there is no reward, there is no discount, there is no funding, there's no compensation for someone to come in and take one of your elite young talents. Dave Donaghy needs to read the history books because the Broncos have been the best at it over the years and you know they poach a lot at a lot of ages. Um, I also think the problem with the Broncos is that um, you know they have issues up there with a lot of players being poached from player managers. Um, so if you've got a talented young kid in the Broncos, you risk being poached by another manager or manager group that, that, are, that are with the Broncos. So uh, you don't really have that much loyalty to them. Uh, he's got to fix a lot of things at the Broncos to get loyalty from his players and loyalty from the player managers that they deal with. They can't just keep exclusively going with the one group. Well, and he's gone by. The Broncos would never lose a player they want to keep, ever. That just would never have happened. A player they no. wanted to keep, that would not have gone. Yeah. Simply wouldn't have gone. That's, that's an issue. That's a club issue. They had a very expandable salary cap back in those days. <laughs> they seemed to be able to stretch it a little further than everybody What else. about the poaching? I mean, like, you were at Cronulla when Jack Bird was there? Yep. What happened there? Oh, they, big money. Big money. Money. Right? That, was, that was the difference. Yeah, so money. It, and then I think they got a private jet to pick up Anthony Milford to get him up there. So I just think it's a bit They've rich. always done it. Yeah, it's a bit when, when they were the top team in the competition, they took Scott Prince off the Cowboys. Like, they've always done it. They took Anthony Milford, they took Gordon Tallis, they took Glenn Lazarus. I mean, they've always gone out and poached players from other sides. If you look at their development pathways now, it's full of New Zealand kids. Mm. They're in New Zealand poaching New Zealand kids all the time. So they can't talk about poaching, you know, and you know, it's a little bit of a glass house there. But poaching is an issue in the game because only several clubs develop. Very, in fact, very few do it well. And they will become the target of other clubs. Hanging on to their players. I mean, you've got Reese Walsh at the Warriors. I mean, how how does that happen? Like he, like I'm not in your league or your league as an expert as a football judge, but everybody can see that he's brilliant. How does he end up at the Warriors? Well, they had Sam Walker and Reese Walsh. Well, how does that happen? Well, isn't that more of an issue for them? Well, that's, what thought, well, that's, it's, that's it's, an issue. It's a club issue at the moment. It's a club issue yeah. at the moment. Mm. Yeah. No, there's there's no there's no doubt that's an issue that they've got, to, they've got to solve. That's not just other clubs coming knocking on the door. It's your relationship with the player, with the player's manager, and you know, planning out your roster for the next four or five years and constantly reviewing it and constantly look at where you're going. You know, like, now, they're both 18 years of age. I'm not suggesting for one minute they could both be playing first grade together at the moment. That's going to solve the, the Warriors' problems. But certainly down the track, they're two very, very talented young boys, and normally you wouldn't see the Broncos lose players like that. Um, you know, they're certainly doing well where they are now.